bucka, 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 bucka. <laughs> you know the deal. The next thing we're going to talk about in number sense is called ratios. And in order to introduce ratios, the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, a recipe. And uh, here we're going to be talking about a recipe for cooking. Uh, and this recipe uh, has several ingredients in it, but two of the ingredients are sugar and flour. And uh, this recipe calls for one cup of sugar and three cups of flour. Well, oftentimes when we're dealing with a recipe, we want to make more than what the recipe calls for. So suppose we want to make a lot of cookies uh, rather than just the amount of cookies that the recipe calls for. And uh, so suppose we want to double the amount of cookies that the recipe calls for. Well, the important part of this sentence here is that it's one cup of sugar and three cups of flour. In other words, uh, another way that we would say that is it's one cup of sugar for every three cups of flour. So when we're trying to translate this sentence into a math sentence, uh, we have our number one here. So that's not a problem to, to translate into a math sentence. And we have our number three here. What we're going to be looking at today is this phrase, for every. So basically in this recipe, it's one cup of sugar for every three cups of flour. And when we're translating that into a math sentence, that, that phrase for every translates into a ratio. And we write a ratio like this. So our uh, two little dots there uh, are called a colon, um, but we use it a a as a ratio in math. And the way that we say that colon, uh, those two dots there, is that's for every. So this whole math sentence here would read one for every three. And that's what we have in our recipe here. We have one cup of sugar for every three cups of flour. So if we wanted to double that recipe, if we wanted to make twice as many cookies than the recipe called for, well, that means that we'd have to use two cups of sugar. And if we use two cups of sugar, uh, that means we're doubling the amount of sugar. So we also have to double the amount of flour. So one for every three is the same as two for every six. Well, suppose we wanted to make even more cookies. Uh, suppose we wanted to quadruple the recipe. So we would need four cups of sugar. That, what that means is we'd also have to quadruple the amount of flour. So if we have four cups of sugar, we're going to need 12 cups of flour. Um, so these are all a way to write the same ratio. The original ratio was one cup of sugar for every three cups of flour. Uh, if suppose I had five cups of sugar, that means that I've multiplied the uh, recipe times five. So I have to multiply the amount of uh, cups of flour times five as well, which means I'll need 15 cups of flour. So now we have several examples of writing the same ratio, but in a few different ways. So one for every three is the same as two for every six, which is the same as four for every 12, and that's the same as five for every 15. So if we look at these ratios and, and how they work mathematically in terms of being equivalent, well, if one to three is the same as say, 5 to 15. What we can see here is that um, the values are different. The, the ratio looks different, but the, the value of the ratio is the same. So, so what has changed? Well, the 1 has changed to a 5, and the 3 has changed to a 15. And if we look at this relationship and how this works mathematically, well, what did we do to 1 to make it 5? Well, we wanted to make 5 times as many cookies, so we multiplied that 1 times 5. Similarly, to change the 3 to 15, we also have to multiply it by 5. 
So with equivalent ratios, uh, if you want to write two ratios that, that are the same, you're multiplying uh, the first number and the second number by the same value. Similarly, if we look at, say, uh, 1 to 3 being the same as 4 to 12, Well, here we can see that 1 changed to 4, and 3 changed to 12. And how do those change mathematically? Well, to change 1 to 4, we multiply it by 4. To change 3 to 12, we also multiply it by 4. Well, similarly, we can also see that the ratio 2 to 6 is the same as 1 to 3. So this is a case where we've doubled the recipe. But if we look at this mathematically, uh, in terms of going sort of the, the other way here, th here the numbers are getting smaller instead of bigger. Well, how do we change 2 to 1 and 6 to 3? We're probably not going to multiply. In this case, we're going to divide. And to change 2 to 1, we divide it by 2. Similarly, to change 6 to 3, we also divided by 2. So what we can see here is that just like fractions, if we want to write equivalent ratios, we can either multiply or we can divide. As long as we multiply or divide by the same number, then the ratio is the same. So for example, if I have a ratio 1 to 3, 1 cup of sugar for every 3 cups of flour, if I make a recipe that has 7 cups of sugar, it's a lot of sugar, so I'm going to need a lot of flour. Well, what did we change here? We changed 1 to 7. 1 cup of sugar to 7 cups of sugar by timesing the recipe by 7. So if I want to know how many cups of flour that would take, I'd have to also multiply 3 by 7. So the equivalent ratio of 1 to 3 here would be 7 to 21. So once again, we write equivalent ratios by either multiplying the first number and the second number by the same value, or dividing the first number and the second number by the same value. Let's look at another example of where we need to use equivalent ratios to figure out uh, an answer to a problem. So here, a, a car rental company wants to buy winter tires for its fleet, for all of its cars that it owns. And it owns uh, 1,200 cars. So the question is, how many winter tires will it need to order? Well, if we're going to use ratios to figure out the answer to this question, the first thing we have to ask ourselves is, well, what's the relationship here uh, that's, that's going on in this, in this problem? And the relationship is the number of tires that we have for the number of cars. So we know on a car, um, a car has four tires. So uh, it's four tires for every one car. So as we saw with the previous example, when we want to write this as a math sentence, that term for every is written as a ratio. So four tires for every one car is written as a math sentence like this. Four for every one. Now in this case, we have 1,200 cars. So we have to look at our ratio and ask ourselves, well, which value here represents the number of cars? And in this case, it's, it's the second value. So it's four tires for every one car. So the question is, well, how many tires for 1,200 cars? So we know now that mathematically, to write equivalent ratios, we either multiply or divide. And in this case, we changed 1 to 1,200. And we did that by multiplying by 1,200. So to find the equivalent ratio here, we have to do the same thing to 4. So 4 to 1, to figure out what the, the first value is here, since we multiplied the 1 by 1,200, we have to do the same to 4. And 4 times 1,200 is 4,800. So what that means for this example is if we have a fleet of 1,200 cars, we're going to need 
4,800 tires, uh, which makes sense because we need four tires for each car. Here's another example where we have to use equivalent ratios to figure out uh, the answer to a problem. So here, in this case, we're told that three apples cost $1.20, and we're asked how much do 10 apples cost. Now, typically when we're dealing with questions that involve money in a ratio, usually money goes first. Um, so it's, it's three apples for every $1.20. But uh, I'm going to write that $1.20 first. So, so another way to say that is $1.20 for every three apples. So to write that as a ratio, we have to put one twenty for every three, or one twenty to three. Now, the question here is asking us how much do 10 apples cost? So if we look at this ratio, I know that the first number is, is how much money three apples cost, and the second number is the number of apples that we have, which is three. So we want to figure out the equivalent ratio, but for 10 apples. Now, the problem that we have here uh, when we're trying to change this to an equivalent ratio, to change three to 10, I would multiply, but I have to multiply it by a decimal. I could use a calculator to figure out how much I have to multiply three by to make it 10 by dividing three divided by 10. Um, but what I'm going to do here instead is I'm going to figure out how much one apple cost. So uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in the next unit uh, or in the next video on what's called unit rate. Um, but here basically I'm changing this second value, the number of apples, to one to figure out how much one apple costs. And to change three to one with equivalent ratios, I'm going to divide that by three. So to find the equivalent, uh, for my first value here, we have to do mathematically the same thing. So since I divided the 3 by 3 to make it 1, I have to divide 1.20 by 3. Now having a calculator might come in handy to do that. Um, and if you do that, you'll find that it's 0 0.4. I'm going to write that as 0 0.40. Since we're dealing with money here, that's actually 40 cents. So now uh, I know how much one apple cost. One apple costs 40 cents. But again, the question was, well, how much do 10 apples cost? So now to change 1 to 10, I have to multiply it by 10. So we have to do the same thing to 0 0.40. Multiply that by 10, and we get 4. Since I'm dealing with money here, again, I'm going to write 4.00. I'm going to include the tenths and the hundredths. And so the answer to our question here would be, well, 10 apples would cost $4. So to finish off our introduction to ratios and equivalent ratios, I'm going to ask you to answer a few questions here. So with question number one, we're told that a grade 7 class must have three boys for every five girls. So the question is, if there are 15 girls, first of all, how many boys are there in the class? And uh, the second question is, how many students in total are there in the class? Question number two asks, if it costs $2 for five oranges, how much does eight oranges cost? Uh, like the one that we did with the apples, I would suggest you first calculate how much one orange costs there before you try to figure out how much eight oranges cost. And then finally, if a car can go 180 kilometers in three hours, how far can it go in four hours? Again, I would recommend there that you figure out first how far it goes in one hour and then calculate how far it goes in four hours. Um, and with each of these, try to use equivalent ratios to answer each of the questions. If you're able to do that, congratulations. You now have a firm understanding of an introduction to ratios and equivalent ratios.